Now, this is a perfect way to top off any day of anime to talk about Gintama. <sighs> I'm glad to have this series back. I'm so happy to be able to sit down and talk about Gintama, Odd Jobs, Gintoki, Kondo, Katsura, just all of the characters. Just It makes me happy to sit down and finally discuss Gintama once again. It has been a very long time. It's been a good long while since I've talked about this series, and I've been itching to finally talk about it. I... I missed it. I, I'm glad to finally have the anime back. But before I begin, just a few thoughts on, you know, the continuation of the anime. There's a very likely possibility that this could be the final Gintama anime. What I'm getting at is, is that, as we all are very aware of, Gintama is reaching a close in the manga. It's getting very close to its conclusion. It was even announced it's in its final arc. Gintama arcs do not last that long. They do not. And with us knowing the announcement that Gintama is going to be ending very soon, this could likely be the final anime season of Gintama, depending on how long the final arc is. And, you know, the final arc of Gintama, I highly doubt it's going to be as long as, like, something like Bleach or Naruto, so when you think about it like that, Gintama might end before this year is up. Maybe in the next couple months, maybe somewhere around in summer, Gintama could likely end. So this could be the final anime of Gintama, and, I mean, if it is... It's sad, but at the same time, I'm glad, you know, such a long-running series could get a fabulous anime adaptation from such a great studio that shows they love this series. Studio Sunrise always showing they love Gintama with their anime original content, especially at the beginning of this first episode of Gintama's continuation. It's just a perfect presentation of how much Sunrise cares about this series. I mean, let's just talk about that for a second. As we all know, we're very aware that there's a lot of anime original content in Gintama, but it's done in a way that doesn't feel out of place. It still fits the mold of what Gintama is about. They can do these little parodies and comedy skits and stuff that just makes sense because that's just what Gintama is. And when you see Gintoki and uh, the rest of Odd Jobs just walking in to this building like, oh, this is our new time slot. Like, hey, all you night owls and stuff watching us in the middle of the night. I'm like, yo, this is pretty fucking good. It felt like they were talking to me because I was actually watching it very late in the middle of the night, Gintama, because shit sleep squ uh, schedule, by the way. I mean, yeah, my, my sleep schedule's all fucked up. So, getting down to it, though, just seeing how Sunrise was picking fun at their time slot now for Gintama, I'm like, well done. Very, very well done. That, that's just something I like to see. That's stuff I love to see from Gintama. These little scenes that just add so much more life to these episodes. They didn't need to do that. They didn't need to go out of their way and make a scene like that. They didn't. They could just dive right into the manga content and start adapting it. They did not need to go out of their way to making a little scene like that just to have a little bit of fun and jokes before they get into the very serious and dark shit. Because if you really look at this episode, majority of this episode was a very dark themed episode for again, Tom. I mean, there was some comedy here and there, but for the most part, the entirety of the episode was mainly focused around being serious. And I like how Studio Sunrise tried to fit in a little bit of comedy towards the beginning, and then they dived right into that serious stuff throughout the rest of the episode. Like to, you know, Gintoki waking up with a dick on his head, like... <laughs> that shit's great. That That is just... That is... Classic. Classic Gintama. But Gintoki getting pissed off and you just see how he does what he does, as always. He just gets pissed off. He's like, you guys don't need to be fucking protecting me. Like, why are you all around me? There's like, yo, Gintoki, I, I missed you, my boy. I missed you. I missed your wonderful voice actor. I missed you. I'm glad to have you back just yelling and... Just being a good guy. So, yes. Sunrise, I do appreciate the little comedy you gave us towards the beginning before you've dived into a lot of the darker stuff. Because what I've heard from the manga readers that are very far ahead in the manga have told me that Gintama is very dark right now. It hasn't been happy for a very long time. There's comedy here and there, but it's a very dark series right now. It's because it's reaching its conclusion. It's staying more serious and more comedy nowadays. And this is probably the very few pieces of comedy that we're going to get from Gintama for a good long while. I mean, we might have an episode with comedy here and there, but overall, it's not going to be like it used to, having like an entire art focused around, you know, a popularity poll. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be focusing more on what the plot is about with Utsuro and, you know, Shoyo. So, getting right down into the first episode of the continuation of Gintama, the first episode dives headfirst right into the plot. Like, straight headfirst into the plot after the aftermath of the Farewell Shinsengumi arc we got in the last season of Gintama. 
We get a lot of world building and characterization to Utsuro and why he was able to survive so much in the last season of Gintama. We now know he is immortal. He, we now know he's taking power f or life from the planets and like all the Tindoshu are doing stuff like this, but it's mainly Utsuro is the only one that is immortal. He's the only one immune to everything. He's the only one that can regenerate and continuously live for so many years without dying. And it's even hinted in this episode when he starts to confront this criminal organization that he kind of wants to end his life. He's like, hey, you know, I, I want to put an end to this. You even see the way he's like, I'll put it into it, I'll put it into you and all this, and you just see how he comes in with all these ships towards the end. So it hints that he's probably done with constantly living, which might hint at why he wanted to live like he did as Shoyo. Now, personally, I'm majority of it, I'm an anime only, okay? I'm just gonna be straight up, I'm still anime only for the most part when it comes to Gintama, besides some few pieces here and there, but I kind of want to dive into why I think Utsuro became Shoyo, and then why he is now an evil bitch right now throughout the rest of the series. So, Shoyo, as we know, that was the teacher, the sensei, to all the disciples. For instance, you know, Gintoki, Katsura, Takasugi, you know, we have also other characters who have became disciples of him, but the main point is, is that Shoyo was someone that was completely different from what we see from Utsuro in the last season, and also what we see going on in this episode. He's like an evil entity. He's completely different from what Shoyo stood for. And my personal belief of what happened here was either A, something triggered Shoyo or Utsuro to change his mindset or something. He was in a very dark moment and he changed his mindset or something, he tried something, he forgot or whatever, maybe he lost his memory and he became Shoyo. Or, he decided to live that life as Shoyo to try to live a full and different life compared to what he lived before. All these countless years he's lived, he probably tried to live like something completely different, teach people, and then when he finally had his head chopped off by Gintoki, it's kind of like that life as Shoyo completely ended. Even though he still lived on as Utsuro, it's kind of like Shoyo died. It was a very symbolic, you know, meaning to it. Shoyo is dead because of that, and he let Shoyo die, and that was just him's way of trying to live a life as a normal person, and if he was to go back and try to, you know, be Shoyo once again, it's kind of like he was desecrating that moment. Maybe something like that's going on. Maybe that's why he tried to change his mindset in the first place, and why he decided to become someone like Shoyo, and then he changed back into Utsuro, or maybe it's something else entirely that needs to be explained. But overall, though, Utsuro is looking to be a very good final villain right now. I mean, this character has been built up for a very long time. I mean, if you look at, you know, the towers and stuff that was shown in this episode with the flashbacks. That's stuff that happened very, very early on in Gintama. We saw stuff like this happening with the tower and all that and how the planet, you know, has stuff inside of it to help out, you know, the technology of the world in different planets. So when you think about it like this, you do know that all these little plot points have been built up for a good long while, and Utsuro as well has been built up, I mean Shoyo has, and now with this coming full front and center, it's looking to be a very final and explosive conclusion to Gintama. Now, talking about what's going on in this episode, it's more of like the disciples meeting up and trying to make battle plans for what is to come. All the disciples need to come together, put aside their differences to really put down the true in baddie, which is their teacher, Shoyo slash Utsuro. So yeah, I mean, first episode of Gintama, very serious stuff, a lot of world building, and I just can't wait to see where it's going to go next with the story, because I mean, I'm mostly anime only, as I said, and I just can't wait to see the final arcs of Gintama. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below, how do you all feel about this new episode finally airing on Sunday night? I love you all so much, please be safe, chibi